shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours, now forevermore. We are worship all.
a move of the Lord in the house this morning. He inhabits the praises of his people. When we get unified together in our worship, it shows God our desperation for his move on our lives. Come on, continue to uplift the name of Jesus together. Strongholds are being broken at this moment. Healings are taking place at this moment. Hallelujah. there is healing in the house. If you have a, a problem or an issue, there is a healing and an answer in this house. Hallelujah. Many times the Bible says your faith has made you whole. I see the faith in the house today. But most importantly, the Lord of Lords and the very God of glory, Jesus Christ, sees your faith today. Hallelujah. 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 It's okay. Worship him. Worship him. Hey, we'll get out of the way. Let God be God. Come on. presence Lord thank you for your presence Lord we're gonna go into a meet and greet if you can shake your neighbor's hand tell them you're glad they came hug their neck let everybody know that they're welcome here you come once as a guest after that your family praise God Isn't God good? I said, isn't God good? He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He filled me with joy. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. I got peace in my life. I get joy like a river. Bubble up inside of me, oh God. Let your spirit roll up inside of me and bubble out to somebody, oh God, I pray. I worship you, Lord. The creator of the universe is in this house this morning. I'm so glad I am in his presence. We have come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Rejoice. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice. Jehovah. Woo! Emmanuel. God with us. The Almighty with us. Woo! In the form of His Spirit. Aren't you glad for His Spirit? Oh, we can't see God. We can't put Him in a chest tube and show your friend this is God. But you can feel Him. As you feel the wind blowing in the trees and you watch where it goes, you can actually watch a move of the Holy Ghost in the house. From one side all the way through to the other. God is awesome. Amen. Clap your hands one more time. I think. Praise God. Ladies, I want everybody to know, Pastor Overton sends his greetings to everybody. He's preaching right now in Texas for his cousin. But believe me, he will be watching online after he's finished. And we're so thankful that God got in there safely. He didn't get into a lake, but God got in there safely, and I'm thankful for that. There was snow, uh, there was ice and stuff, and, uh, but he made it okay, and I'm, I'm very thankful. Okay, Sister Hasey, raise your hand. Look around and see Sister Hasey. Sister Hasey is expecting her first child. She is going to be having a man child. A man child. Amen? I love men children. Oh boy, when my daughter came, that was something else. I love her too. So much. She's just like me. I feel sorry for her. Okay, ladies, we are going to have a baby shower for Sister Hasey. We're going to have cake and punch games. We're going to do it right here at the church for those who are able to come on Saturday the 15th at 1 p.m. Saturday the 15th at 1 p.m. right here at Cross Creek Apostolic Church. Let's everybody come and bless Sister Hasey. This is her first child. She's having a boy. If you want to buy outfits, that's great, but she has need of everything. She's registered at Target. Please come and have fellowship with Sister Hasey. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing in this place. I can feel him. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been so blessed by our prayer and fasting. I know that God is doing a new thing. All of my hyphen, we are meeting at my house at 6 p.m. Come out. A little birdie told me there will be Daniel Fast approved banana bread. So please come <laughs> for that. Bring your Bibles. There's a lot for us to plan for for this upcoming year. Please make it a priority for you to be there. Also, we are having our prayer and fasting again until February 1st. Every evening, the church is open at 7 p.m. for you to come and pray with your church family. So please come to that. Also, Saturday mornings at 7, um, please come sacrifice and come to that time. Also, on January 31st, that's a Friday, we are having an all-night prayer meeting starting at 10 p.m. The last two that we've done have really blessed me. So please, if you need something broken in your life, if you just need a touch from the Lord, please come to that. And also, on February 22nd and the 23rd, we are having our pastoral anniversary celebration. There will be a service here at church on the Saturday. And then the 23rd, that Sunday evening, there is a special banquet at the Riderwood facility. Tickets for adults are $40. Tickets for children ages 5 to 10 are $35. Myself and Sister Andrea are selling tickets. We will be in the lobby today. Um, so come up to our table um, and just come support our pastor. Thank you for attending these announcements. Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful for hyphen ministry? Hallelujah. 
Aren't you thankful for a, a pastor that's been here pastoring for 25 years? Amen. Faithful pastor, him and his wife. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to the voice of God. Amen. At this time, we're going to go and take up our offering, tithes and offering. Uh, Lord has truly blessed us here at Cross Creek. I can see it. Beautiful building. Beautiful building. It's all because of the faithful giving of each and every one of you. Thank you for that. We're going to pray over the offering real quick. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to give into your storehouse. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give to your purpose, God. And Lord, we pray that you would bless every giver, Lord. Those who can and cannot, Lord. As long as we give our best unto you, God. And we give it all to you for your glory and the glory of the kingdom. And everybody say in Jesus' name. Sometimes we're like, oh, God, like, here I am. You know, the first song of church, we give a little bit and then a little bit more as we go into the service, and God just keeps pulling at us. But um, just to really give everything to God. So as we sing this, I just pray that, you know, you're encouraged and touched just to really give everything to him. Because when you give it all to him, that's when you have peace. Like, that's when I feel peace, and I just feel relieved in his presence. So just worship with us. Give up. 
this morning move forward in the Holy Ghost move forward in your walk with him move forward in your calling that's right you got a calling on your life even when the devil lies to you and tell you that you don't you do and God wants you to fulfill that calling he wants you to go he therefore into all the world hallelujah so thankful for our music team. God has blessed us, hasn't he? Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm ready to move forward today. Hallelujah. Are you ready to move forward? If you're ready to move forward, give a shout of triumph unto the Lord. The devil's scared. He is trembling. That's right, sister. He is trembling. Because God is still in control. Never will that ever change. He is still in control. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I'd like to give honor to my great Lord Jesus Christ for waking me up this morning. I'd like to give honor to the leadership here at Cross Creek, pastor who's in Texas. I know being used of God greatly, our first lady and the elders of the church and each and every one of you. Y'all mean a lot to me, Brother Cat. Appreciate your ministry. And I'd like to give honor to my mother-in-law today. She's with us. Very faithful woman of God. I believe it's by the prayers of a loved one sometimes that just carries you that extra step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Y'all bear with me today if you would. If you have your Bibles handy while you're still standing, for those who can, I'm going to read from two books in the Bible. They're not too lengthy, but if you would, bear with me. I'm going to read from the book of Genesis and the book of Ephesians. If you would, turn in the book of Genesis to chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 1 through 13. And then when we get to Ephesians, we'll stay in the uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. But in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1 reads this way. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doeth know that in that day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good from evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them were both opened. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid them from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard the voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee, that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. If you would turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 9 through 14, read this way. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, According to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Everybody say an inheritance. inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of whom who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, whom you also trusted after ye heard the word of truth. Everybody say truth. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. God has dealt with me for the last couple of weeks on this. And I pray, pray that I follow the Holy Ghost on this. But if you just give me a few moments, I'd like to talk to you very about a very serious topic today. A little something that I feel like the Holy Ghost has anointed me to title. There is a battle for your inheritance this morning. There is a battle for your inheritance this morning. Let's ask the Lord to help us. God, we're so happy to be here in your presence, Lord. We're so happy to worship together, worship freely without anybody coming to harm us, Lord. Lord, we just pray today as we dig into your word, Lord, that you would touch us in our hearts, God, that make us reach out for the calling that you've placed on our life, God. Lord, we want to be acceptable in your sight. Lord, we want to be pleasing in your sight, God. And Lord, we want to move towards the things that you have awaiting for us. And everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. The angels stand around the throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We should be able to say praise God more than just on Sundays and Thursdays. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see in the word of God that the apostle Paul would boldly state that Satan himself would transform himself into an angel of light. This being the adversary's main strategy of deception as he approaches the saints of God daily in his attempt to lead not only us in the church astray, but to lead all of humanity away from God and rob them of their rightful inheritance. Satan's global plan of deception for mankind would begin in the Garden of Eden, the Bible tells us, as he would disguise himself through the use of a serpent and would approach Eve without revealing who he was to her. His approach was a subtle one, and it was full of deceit as he would pose just a simple question. Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Eve would then, without hesitation, correctly restate God's instruction to the adversary. And in reaction to her response, just as Satan still does today, he would take his deception a step further so he could succeed with his plan to lead Adam and Eve astray and rob them from their spiritual inheritance by directly contradicting what God had told them to do. Even still today, the devil tries to contradict the word of God. And if you are not careful and if you are not full of the Holy Ghost, you will find yourself falling victim in his devices that he uses, which are his lies and the false doctrines of this world to pull not only saints of God, but humanity away from the truth of God. In Adam and Eve's situation, the devil would take his deception just a little bit further as he, as he would question God's motive. You see, the devil always questions God's purpose and plan in your life. He always does so in the most unrelenting ways. And as we see in Scripture, he would deceptively state in Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, you will not surely die. For God knows in that day that you eat, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. These lies from Satan were meant to deceive Eve, leading her to eat this forbidden fruit, thus causing sin to enter into the world, robbing her and her husband of their spiritual inheritance that God had already previously set them up with. The same type of lie the enemy told Eve clearly illustrates the line of attacks that is used daily on the saints of God and those who are striving to get closer with God in their daily walk. Just let me enlighten you today and tell you that the devil is aggressively seeking to slander the holiness of God while deceiving men and women about their relationship with God. Let us not be naive to this fact because Satan has a ton of deceitful devices that he will try and use against you. It was not God's will when he created you for you to be influenced by this carnal world. It was not God's will when he influenced you to be in, uh, to, created you to be influenced by the lies of the devil. But it was God's will when he created you would be the one to be doing the influencing in this world. Hallelujah. There is a comforter. There is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. We got to understand today that our life can either be a, a tremendous example for someone to be led by, or it can be an, a, horrible, a horrible warning for somebody. You need to know that today. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, as the Apostle Paul would coach his young apprentice, he said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. This has already begun to take place for some time now in the world due to the progression of the ungodliness that the devil has seeped in. And it is becoming more commonly common as we see this gentle doctrine of easy beliefism being preached on some church platforms today. There are men and women who are watering down the gospel of Jesus Christ, telling individuals that a simple confession of faith will get you into the kingdom of heaven. I am here to tell you today that that is a lie straight from the pits of hell. Clearly, scripture states 
that unless a man be born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I have sat back and pondered many times what would make a man and a woman clearly disregard the words of Jesus to preach anything else than forever settle scripture. And then God showed me that the adversary is so relentless and he is an animal and he will stop at nothing to steal your inheritance away from you. It is important that you, don't, that you know that today. Misery loves company. The devil does not want you to go to heaven and live eternal wonderfulness with our King Lord Jesus Christ. He wants company in hell. The Apostle Paul, excuse me today, my voice is, is a little gone. Pray for me. The Apostle John would warn us in his epistle in chapter 4, verse 1 in 1 John. He said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. This warning for John was aimed at the beloved saints of God because he knew that the enemy was a strategic deceiver. And whether you want to admit it or not, the devil is a very, very clever con artist. And John knew that he would try to infiltrate the church and water down the gospel of Jesus Christ by any means necessary. Jude, in his book, would also add his thought to the matter. In Jude chapter 1 verse 4, he said, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. We are seeing this end time scripture being revealed right before our very eyes. And Jude was warning the saints of God to never stop earnestly contending for the faith because there is an inheritance at stake. And I fear that many might miss the mark because of this deluded doctrine that is tickling the ears of many in this world. And if we miss the promise of God, we will miss the call of God because it is of our own doing. Because God has given us his word to be led by. He has given us the fivefold ministry to be instructed by. And he has given godly instruction on how to reap our reward. It is up to us to take hold of it. I've said it many times. God is a perfect gentleman. He will never make you do anything. Free will. The Apostle Paul would again warn Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, as he would tell that young apprentice, but evil men, seducers, show acts worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You see, this, the devil's deception continues today to compound as the church progresses to reach many. The heart of the church fights to pull people out of the pits of hell. The devil and his minions are right there trying to pull them right back in. I am talking about the battle for your inheritance this morning. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 as he would write to the Jewish Christian. He said, but there were false prophets among the people. His time. There were false prophets back then. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, our time. There are false teachers today who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. The devil's deception does have a purpose today, saints of God. And that purpose is nothing but destruction. I don't care how attractive he might make it look. I don't care how tasty he might make it look. But it leads to only one way, and that is destruction. The devil's aim is to destroy you today. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your marriage. And if he cannot go after that, he will go after your children. And he will not stop until he destroys your relationship with God. The Bible likens him as an adversary that is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And the reason that he is doing so is because he knows that we are living in the greatest hour of the church and I truly believe I truly believe brother Vogler that we are the generation that will hear the trumpet sound yes you heard me right this is the greatest hour of the church in fact the Bible declares it to be so Acts chapter 2 verse 17 through 18 says and it shall come to pass in the last day saith God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your own men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy 
Listen to me today. The devil is running scared. He is desperate because we are a generation of power. And the enemy wants to stop the momentum of the church. That is why he wants to take your inheritance this morning. That is why he is after your inheritance this morning. That is why he is attacking your family. That is why he is attacking your pastor. That is why he is attacking your husband and your, your wife. But I'm here to tell you, do not dare miss out on the calling that God has given to you. Do not dare miss out the, on the anointing that you have prayed for, that you have fasted for, because there is an inheritance tied directly to it. Hallelujah. We are in a battle for our inheritance this morning. Jesus would answer and to his disciples. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. But many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. This fits perfectly with the description of what we have of Satan in the word of God as Jesus describes the devil as a murderer from the beginning that abode not in truth because there's no truth in him. Jesus tells us that when the devil speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. And the father of it. The adversary has come to lie and cheat and steal away your inheritance in this hour. This inheritance is too special to let go of Cross Creek. It's so special in fact that God decided to step down out of heaven so that it would be available for you. The very reason that Jesus bled on the cross. The very reason that he suffered and took on your sin. He took on my sin. is so that we could have an inheritance this morning. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody today. I'm preaching to somebody today. I wish somebody would hear me because the adversary is attempting to drive you back and push you away from a very uh, push you away from the very thing that the blood procured this morning. Do not let this spiritual perversion that this carnal world brings in push you away from the promise that God has prepared to you. You got to refuse to give ground to the adversary. There's too much at stake here. Your very own inheritance depends on it. We are in a battle for our inheritance. I cannot express this enough. Just let me tell you today that every spiritual battle that the adversary brings to your front door is intended to keep you away, away from your God-given inheritance. It is always an attempt to rob you of your God-intended blessing or a God-intended position or a God-given authority or a God-given place in his kingdom. It is never just about the battle, Brother Palmer. There's always something at stake. So I pray that you hear this overweight preacher this morning and understand that this is more than just an casual encounter with the enemy because the enemy is trying to take away the very eternal blessing that is rightfully yours. That is why it is important that you check any spirit of denial that you have in your life. You got to also be aware of any disappointment that you hold on to in your life because if you are not careful, disappointment will turn into a breeding ground for disobedience. You got to get rid of that attitude that says, well, I've been hurt by the church or I've been let down by the church or I didn't get to jump into that ministry that I thought I was going to jump into. That is all a plan from hell to rid you of your inheritance of God. You got to let it go. That's why you got to root down. <clears throat> you got to root down in the word of God while being consecrated. To a life of prayer and fasting, hoping that you find the mind of God in the situation and not lean on your own understanding. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to you today to remind you that heaven is sweet, but hell is real and it is very hot. There is something called eternity. And it does matter if you are living right. It does matter if you have a prayer life. It does matter what you do when no one else is watching. Because God is watching. Nothing is hid from God. You cannot have an identity in the church and have a different identity out in the world. Because if you do, the anointing of God will start to slip away out of your life. And you don't want to find that place in your life, my friend. But I am thankful that his mercy and unmerited favor is available. That when I find myself struggling, I can hit my knees and say, God forgive me I want to hold on to my inheritance today we are in a battle 
Do you have your armor on? Do you still carry your sword? Where's your helmet at? That's why the Bible says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. What's he say after that? Because you'll deceive your own selves if you're not doers of the word. Don't depend on your own interpretation. Don't, don't react off a of feeling. God has showed me one thing in the last three months that I, I guess I should have understood but never understood. But now for anything, I have to pray about it. Even before I ask pastor something, God, should I even ask him that? But we got to pray and we got to find the mind of God on everything. That is because out of the God's mouth comes knowledge and holy understanding. My grandma, God rest her soul, apostolic woman for 30 something years. She said, Ryan, if you know better, you do better. Anybody, anybody know better today? We got to be as newborn babies that desire the sincere milk of the word so that we might grow thereby. Because if we don't, we'll fall victim to the false teachings and the false doctrines that the enemy makes sound so believable. Help us, Lord. There's a battle this morning. There's a battle this morning. We see from the beginning of time. The actions of the devil has always been about trying to mimic that of God or mirror that of God. But in reality, Satan stands in the direct opposition of the word of God. So let me elaborate a little further this morning. Not only are we in a battle for our inheritance, but we are caught in the battle of kingdoms. We are in the battle of kingdoms this morning. You need to know that there's two thrones, but one only matters. One throne is the one that Jesus Christ sits on. And that's called the throne of righteousness. And the other throne is the throne of iniquity. This is the throne that belongs to Satan. And the only thing that trickles down from this throne is destruction. But I'm going to be honest with you this morning. The battle of the kingdoms is not even really a battle, brother, brother Little. It's not even a battle. It may be in Satan's mind. But I can assure you today that the kingdom of our great Lord Jesus Christ will prevail and be victorious this morning. But the honest truth is, the honest truth is, the adversary knows that already. And he knows that the battle of the kingdoms is an unobtainable objective for him. So he's going after your inheritance. He's going after your inheritance this morning. We have to guard this precious inheritance with every fiber of our being. There have been so many that have gone before us from the beginning of time who have gave their life for this special inheritance. And they have warned us that these things will come to pass. When we look at Adam and Eve in the garden, Scripture records God actually trying to actually help Adam and Eve by just speaking the truth to him because he is truth God made it a point to voice to them but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shall not eat of it thou shall not eat of it quit getting so disappointed when God says no because God is trying to protect us the truth is God was trying to protect Adam and Eve by simply saying, you have enough already. Leave that tree alone. Do not build up an appetite for that fruit. I've already set you up spiritually. You already have a perfect gift. Adam, do not create that earthly thing. Do not create an appetite for the earthly vision. I've got you all taken care of. If you just listen to me, you will have no knowledge of sin. You don't need that tree. You don't need that fruit. Am I not enough for you, Adam? You don't need those earthly things. You only need the spiritual perfection that I've already laid up for you. But yet, we see iniquity creeps in by the hand of the adversary in the form of a certain and an appetite arose and it killed them spiritually. The Bible says, for in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. 
You see, they were made perfect. But they lost the promise because of the iniquity. Or should I just be honest and say rebellion to God's word. Now let's look at Jesus for an example. He just gets baptized by John. His identity is established. God has bared witness to his fullness. He begins to make his way into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The devil presents himself to Jesus. But there's, there's a great oneness revelation that you have to understand when you read this portion of scripture here. If the devil was an angel of God from the beginning that could play every stringed instrument, that he was one of the favorite angels... And Jesus was the son of God who existed with God, as Trinitarians would say, from the very beginning. If he is co-eternal or God the son beside God the father, as the Trinitarians would say, how come the devil did not know who Jesus was when he met him in the wilderness? He had just heard the rumors. He had just heard about the miracles and the signs and the wonders. Of what was taking place. But the Bible says the tempter came to him and said, if thou be. If thou be the son of God. Command these stones to be made bread. Satan was trying to attack the identity of God. Just like he attacks your identity today. You see, Satan succeeded with Adam and Eve. After coaxing them to have a carnal appetite. For earthly fruit after God had already set them up spiritually. But now he was going after the second Adam. The final Adam. The very fleshly tabernacle of God. The expressed image of his persons. The very fullness thereof. The one who holds all the power. But Jesus' reply was so very simple. Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus was basically saying, you can try if you want to, devil, but I am the fullness thereof. I am the beloved son, wherein God is well pleased. I do not have an appetite for your deceptive gibberish today. I am already spiritually perfect. I am the reconciliation for humanity. I am that I am. Hallelujah. But Paul, Paul gives the best interpretation of this when he's trying to preach to the Colossian church. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, he said, For by him were all things created that are in heaven or that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things and by him. All things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross and by him to reconcile all things into himself, by him I say, whether these things in earth or things in heaven. That is why it's important that we have our spiritual vision on. That can only be given by the infilling of the Holy Ghost this morning. And that only comes by obedience to the gospel. The gospel is the good news. And I'm thankful for the good news. And the good news for those who don't know is the fact that God has came. But you know what? We got to apply the good news through the death, the burial, and the resurrection in our very own life. Because it's only by that can you be saved. Do not allow Satan to breed an appetite for destruction in your life because it will separate you from your inheritance. We are in a battle today because the devil will always try to mirror exactly what God is doing. You see, he can mirror the singing in the worship. He can mirror the modest dress code. He can mirror the decor in the church building. But there are two things that he cannot mirror, saints of God. And that is the experience and the word, my friend. Need I remind you today 
that the devil has confused many in this world. But I want each of you to remember that God is not the author of confusion. There is still one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is still one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. There is still a requirement to follow peace with all men without which no man shall see the Lord. He said there's still a requirement without holiness. No man shall see the Lord. If you do not study the word of God, my friends, or have a consistent prayer life established, or you don't have a man or a woman of God in your life, it's time for you to start studying the word of God more now than you ever have. It's time for you to start hitting your knees and seeking God for those intimate moments of intercession. It's time for you to have a conversation with Pastor Overton. It's time for you to find Sister Overton and say, hey, Pastor, hey, Sister, I want to get involved. I want to get involved in the work. I want God's anointing on my life. I want to reach my full potential in my ministry because I know there is an inheritance at stake. I don't want to miss out on my inheritance. If you're prepared to fight and stand for your inheritance, shout unto the Lord this morning. Jesus said to the disciple Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Plain and simple. Jesus came to offer life as God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us, God walking among us. When you've seen Jesus, you've seen God the only way you can see God. There's no other way you can see him. Satan, however, is trying to have the opposite effect on you. If he can get you to question, you have a problem. Not you. We as a body. Because your problems are my problems. If you're hurting, I'm hurting. If you're rejoicing, I'm rejoicing. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 tells us, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of our glorious gospel of Christ, who is... The image of God should shine into them. It is not God's will that the gospel be hid from you today. It is not God's will that you do not know who he is today. Notice that it said the God of this world had blinded the minds of them. Lowercase g. The devil's the prince and power over the air. He's the God of this world. Ephesians 2 and 2 tells us that. Satan is the prince in power over the air, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience. We see in society today a rebellion like no other. It is a rebellion that is not just against authority, Sister Overton, but it is a rebellion against God and his word. That is because the devil has been so persuasive in his deception towards mankind. He wants you to desire the carnal thing. He wants you to desire the opposite of God. That is why we got to be more consecrated now in our walk with God than we've ever been in our whole life. I'm talking about consecration to your devotion, being consecrated in coming to church and coming to prayer meetings, being consecrated to our church duties. But most importantly, being consecrated in our prayer life. Relationship. Relationship. Husbands, try not talking to your wife for one week and see where that gets you. You won't be married very long. Same thing with God, though. Funny how we only call him when we need him. Lord, forgive us. We need to develop that attitude, brothers and sisters, that I says that I don't care what the world is doing, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. As for me and my house, I'm going to be sold out to God. What do you need from me, pastor? I'll do it. I'll, do, I'll be the first one there. I, I'll do it, pastor. Hallelujah. 
It is paramount today that every one of us understand that Satan will continue to try to creep into your life via a lie, via a disagreement, or very, via a delusion, or via, via, I'm not preaching against television this morning, but I'm going to say this, via a television program. Why do you think they call it programming? <clears throat> you better be careful what you feed your spiritual well-being. <clears throat> you see, the Ammonites and the Moabites of today are trying to cloud our vision of what the inheritance really looks like. When we look in the Old Testament, Scripture records the Ammonites and the Moabites. And they were produced out of the sp spiritual perversion that was Lot's daughters getting him drunk and laying with him. And these sons of Lot were produced out of this ungodly act. And they are the ancient Semitic people who excuse me, were perennial and sporadic in conflict with the Israelites. They did not want Israel to serve the one and only true living God. They wanted Israel to serve their gods and conform to their paganistic ways. And in the process of doing so, they would try to lead Israel away from their promise. By making sin look attractive. There's a battle for truth today. There's a battle point blank. But saints of God do not fear. Because I've come not, I've not come to preach doom and gloom to you all morning. But I do have some great news for you. I want you to listen real close. Cut your hearing aids up if you, if you have them. The devil can only do what God will allow him to do. You need to know that today. He can do no more, and he certainly won't do any less. And if God does not give the devil permission, then he can do nothing, and you need to know that today. But let me tell you what the enemy will do. He will come, and he'll tell you what he wants to do. And if you believe him, you will become paralyzed by what he wants to do to you but was denied access to do from the very beginning by God. Because if you, if you listen to the enemy as he threatens you and you believe the lies that he sends your way, this will keep you from giving your everything to God. And it will push you further away from God, relieving you of your inheritance. But it is in those moments of attack that you need to glorify God at your bliss. Because the enemy is unable to take your inheritance today unless you are willing to give it to him. <clears throat> it is not God's will that any should perish. But it is, however, something that we can forfeit if we choose not to fight for it. I pray you all hear me today. That when the adversary is telling you what he wants to do. He is just signaling to you that he's unable to do what he has planned. Let me remind you today that when you understand that the enemy is just a liar and you resist his attempts to frighten you, the Bible declares that he will in fact flee from you. Because you're ready for the great revelation. If he could kill you, you already would be dead. He can't hurt you. He cannot destroy you. Only you can hand over your. I'm preaching to somebody today to tell you quit listening to the enemy. Quit listening to his lies because there is an inheritance at stake. Hallelujah. We will not let Satan cheat us out of our inheritance today. It's too precious. It's too precious. It costs too much. <clears throat> I hate to hear when people say, God, I'm, I'm nothing without you. That's so contradictory to the word of God. Because God, you were enough for God to die for. 
You are worth something. You are worth something. You are important to God. Hallelujah. When we look at Job and all his affliction, when you read the book of Job, the devil's only mentioned in chapters 1 and 2. There's 42 chapters in the Bible, in that book. And Job's only mentioned in chapters 1 and 2. Um, the devil's only mentioned in chapters 1 and 2. That's because the devil can only go so far when you got God. That's, the devil, that's because the devil's got to stop when God says stop. And even though Job had to deal with the mockery of three unfaithful so-called friends, he had his mind set on the faithful one. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. I'm talking about the battle for your inheritance this morning. <clears throat> the Bible says that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Oh my, how blessed we are. Oh my, how blessed we are. What do you mean, Brother Matthews? Well, let me tell you. The forefathers were promised an inheritance. But it was an inheritance of land and of descendants. The Bible says they obtained not the promise of God. Hebrews 11 and 39 said they obtained a good report through faith and received not the promise. In other words... They were sealed by their good report of their faith and obedience to God. But now we as Gentiles are sealed by the branding of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the thing that testifies of Jesus. Jesus said it will testify of me. Hallelujah. God has given us the earnest today. And when you translate the word earnest, and the Greek is pronounced erabon, meaning that it is his pledge or a partial payment towards us. God has put a down payment on your soul. Do not let him down by giving it up to the devil. He's given us a little bit in advance this morning. But we got to hold on to it. <clears throat> if you can hold on to that earnest this morning. It is written. I love it when that is before anything in scripture. That means it's forever settled. It is written. I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the hearts of men. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. There is an inheritance at stake this morning. Hallelujah. There is an inheritance at stake this morning. And Jesus said. I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you into myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This inheritance is worth fighting for this morning. This inheritance. Are you prepared to battle for your inheritance today? Stand with me. Hallelujah. There is an inheritance at stake. And we need to make our minds up right now that we refuse to hand it over. Amen. Satan's goal is to deceive the whole world with his lies. And what is so painful to hear and watch is that the devil has corrupted the Christian faith to the point that that no longer reflects the faith that was once delivered to the apostles. You know what's really sad? Is that the enemy acts like he wants our inheritance more than we do sometimes. Well, oh, I'm preaching to somebody today. God is looking for his people to stand in the gap today. For those who are being led astray by deception. He is looking for those who are willing to step out in boldness today under the authority of the Holy Ghost and reach down into the pits of hell and start pulling people out. <clears throat> I will not back up on this message of truth. Pastor Overton will not back up on this message of truth. The UPCI, the PAW, the ALJC will not back up on this message of truth. You need to repent of your sins. You need that watery grave of baptism in the wonderful name of Jesus. You need the infilling of the Holy Ghost. 
because that's the only way you can be complete and justified through him. We got to have that mindset that says, if you know what, if you want to go to hell, you're going to have to step over me to get there. This is important business. There's a battle at stake today. Will you be a voice of truth today in a world full of lies? God has called you for such a time as this. That's right. Come on, Holy Ghost. Now is not the time to start doubting. Now is not the time to get angry at your pastor. Now is not the time to have an alt with a brother or sister in the congregation. But now is the time to unify. And you say, you know what, sister, whatever you're going through, we're here. We're going to get through it. You know what, brother, whatever you're going through, brother Knox, I'm right here with you. I'm here with you, brother. We need this Holy Ghost. That's the only down payment for your inheritance today. Hallelujah. I, I feel the Holy Ghost just telling me to get out of the way, but here's what I want you to do, and I want you to listen. If you'll do it in faith grab somebody next to you if it's appropriate and you bring them to this altar and we're going to pray for each other's inheritance today because I believe ministries will open up today I believe that callings are going to go forth today I believe renewals in the spirit will go forth today but there is a battle at place and it's your inheritance and if we can unify if we can unify together Nothing will be withheld from us. Begin to minister to each other. Begin to minister. <laughs> Come on, that's right. Minister to one another. Pray for each other. Pray that there be a hedge of protection over each other. Come on, there's a spiritual. The Holy Ghost is here. If you've not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's available today. Will you step out in faith and come up and hold your arms up to heaven and ask God to fill you? That's right, minister. Minister. Pray one way.